Howdy guys, today I'm going to show you a little bit about early deck building. Um, as in how you start to build your deck for PvP when you don't have anything. So I've been very fortunate to get this card and this card in boosters. Um, and Enmo. Um, also lucky with that one. Um, and... But, you know, I don't have Hurricane. I don't have everything. I don't have Ghost Spears, ironically enough, and I haven't been able to find anyone that has them uh, for a reasonable price. Um, but through boosters and trades and stuff, I've been able to get this deck for Fire Nature. So I'm going to show you why I chose these cards over some other cards, right? Like, for example, why do I have Death Glider? Um, besides that I like it, why do I have Mo? Um, so we're, we're going to go through these and explain my thought process in building um, with limited resources, right? So, uh, as most people probably share this experience with me, it's very difficult to get into a game. I'm always disconnecting, so you can't really fulfill the quests all you want. Um, having uh, difficulty getting upgrades and gold and stuff. But anyway, I'll just show you my priorities, right? So, I am traditionally a Fire Nature player, and that's a very good deck to play to start because it's cheap. Um, with Witch Claws, then Shadow Frost or maybe Shadow Nature, um, those are also going to be good decks to play. But I play Fire Nature, so so if you guys want, I can try and do a video on building a Shadow Nature deck and the considerations you should take when you don't have all the cards, you don't have upgrades and stuff. But here's Fire Nature. So first thing, I've got Sunstriders. I was able to pay uh, too much for an extra charge, but I got an extra charge and... Actually, no, I think I didn't pay too much for this extra charge. I paid too much for something, but um, I think this was reasonable. Uh, so I got an extra charge. I would like as many charges as I wanted, and this was my first priority to make upgrade three. As you can see, I've got a scavenger. Um, would be nice to have more scavengers or more upgrades, but you can deal without them, especially if you have thugs. Um, thugs, I just happened to get a couple of thugs, so that's why they're upgraded. I mean... It's good that they're upgraded, but you know. Uh, the next card I would prioritize is Eruption. So this is, so Eruption, Surge of Light, um, Glacier Shell, maybe to a lesser extent, but especially Eruption, Surge of Light, and Nasty Surprise. These are the like most used cards in your deck. So you really want to have as many charges of them as possible, and you really want them upgraded as high as possible. So those are. You know, Eruption and Sun Shredders, I would say, are the two cards I use most in Tier 1. Um, if you've watched any of my other stuff, you'll know that you'll know that I also like to have Mortar. I don't have one, so I'm living without it. You know, um, Fire Sworn is also a good card to have in Tier 1. Sun Sunder is a good card to have in Tier 1. Um, you will definitely run into problems without having all the cards, but I would say this is a good way to start and things to prioritize, and especially when everybody else doesn't have all the cards. Um, you can manage, right? Now on to tier two. Um, I guess I'll, I'll show you what cards I have so you have some some idea, right? So I'm building um, wreckers. Um, you can use wreckers if you have room. Um, the main advantage of a wrecker is to pop out uh, pop out a sunderer. Um, actually. I might have some cheese with using Wreckers and then popping out Mo, because if you guys know about Mo's Stampede, um, this thing just destroys walls. Um, the Juggernaut Stampede was nerfed, so you, even if you spawn it near a Wrecker or, or a Rallying Banner, the Juggernaut can't Stampede immediately, but Mo can. So there's potential cheese with that, but I didn't want to waste a slot in my deck for that specific interaction. and. My thugs have enough charges, so yeah. But if you don't have charges, um, charges are super important in tier one. Um, adding like a wrecker or a nomad just to give yourself some charges might not be a bad idea. Um, and other than that, you know, like nomad and strikers are pretty bad in PvP. Banner of Glory, and eh, no, um, you might you might have some small niche uses for it. Um, like an overpriced, uh, what you would call it, frost barrier, but you know I wouldn't really say it's worth it. Blaster cannon, no. 
and then we get on to my tier two fire cards right so fire stalker is a card you start with is nice because it has siege it synergizes well with nature because of roots and oink um, and it's also a budget L counter. So I happen to get a Gladiatrix. It's not the one I want, but it's the one I have. Um, and so I do have an L counter, but other than that, I don't have any L counters. So if you need an L counter in tier two, Fire Soccer is reasonable. It's not that good, but it's it'll, it'll work for you. Um, also, it works as a kind of semi S counter because of the knockback. So if you look and see I spawn some S units, we can knock back here. Um, it's not that good, but if you pair it with something like uh, like your own batch of small guys, you can you can be pretty effective. So um, Fire Stalker is all around purpose. It is a very under underestimated card because it's pretty weak, but for starting off when everybody has weak cards, I would say it's very versatile, very useful. Um, I've got a Gladiatrix in my deck here. So, I mean, obviously Gladiatrix is a good card. I prefer the green variety because it's swift. Um, the purple variety is nice because it has this debuff effect. Um, and I don't recall, does it... Yeah, so she takes more damage. Does she still one-shot a Skyfire Drake? So if you don't know this interaction, this is a super important interaction, which is to hit the Skyfire Drake with one hit, and then erupt him. Okay, so that still works. Um, yeah, my next card I've got a Skyfire Drake. If at all possible, you want to upgrade him because his upgrades really affect him, right? He gets more life and uh, minus 10 power costs, which is super important because this is one of your most important cards, and you want to have charges, so that's a really big reason to have your Skyfire Drake upgraded. Markley Trap is useless. Um, Ravage is good. Um, you know, it's just a good card, especially when you pair it with something like a Skyfire Drake or a Vile Blood. But we'll get to that. Um, let's limit just to tier two right now. Going through my nature tier one. Um, I mean, these are all. They're not good enough to use in tier 2. And Snaring Roots, that's a core card for Fire Nature, so if I can use it, I should use it. And Venom is something I might think about using. Um, potentially also this purple one, because this can work against... Um, this can work against people who are buffing up with Life Weaving, or against Avatar Frost. This will like immediately kill an Avatar Frost, I think upgrade it especially but yeah anyway um it's a weak card not very good but again if you're mostly using weak cards against other people who have weak cards plus one like really strong card right like avatar frost is probably something you won't see uh, in an early stage of the game just because it costs three frost orbs and that means you also have to have the rest of the frost cards right so not really worth it um Okay, Surge of Light, uh, I upgraded this. This is one of the ones I upgraded to U3, right? I think there's three cards I've upgraded to U3, which is my Eruption, my Sunstrider, and my Surge of Light, because these are the most common cards that I use, right? So those are the, the really spammable cards. Um, yeah. Energy Paris I can't use. Death Glider. Now, uh, everyone makes fun of me because I use Death Glider. Uh, and that's true, I do use like, Death Glider. But look at the cards I've got in my deck. So um, y you've seen this for a while, so it's not really a spoiler. But you can see that my tier two cards, I've got two L counters, a spell, two M counters. Um, I don't need both of these, I just have an extra slot. Uh, spells, and then I've got a Vile Blood, which is not countering anything, right? So I don't have any small counters in my deck, right? That's why we have the Death Glider because there's a small counter. And it also knocks back units, right? So it's super weak, super bad, uh, but when somebody starts spamming Dark Elf Assassins, um, I also don't have Hurricane, right? So it's a budget substitute for Hurricane. Um, so yeah, when people start spamming Dark Elf Assassins or Stone Shards or just things like that, Rage Claws, for example, 
Um, if you don't have Hurricane, this deck is very susceptible to being spammed with small units. So, you know, keep that in mind. That's why I've got the Death Glider and the Fire Stalker for like redundant as knock knockback to to help me survive. Um, yeah, Scythe fans obviously are the ideal S counter, but again, I don't have them. They're expensive. They're rare. Now I've got Twilight Brute and Twilight Minions. Um, I have put both of these in my deck, despite not really using either one of them. Um, but the reason for that is that I need charges in tier two. So if we get to some sort of situation where I need to spam units, um, now I've got five and four extra charges of units to spam, right? Because uh, we don't have upgrades, so charges are low. Okay, Spirit Hunters, I have used them in this deck before. I think at the end of the day, I would rather use Twilight Brute instead of Spirit Hunters. Um, but they're certainly, they're certainly viable in a deck of this quality. Um, it, you know, I, I might I might change my Twilight Brute for Spirit Hunters at some point. You know, we'll see if, if I play some games and I think they're useful. I also have a Moon, which is cool. Uh, but Moon is kind of weak and kind of expensive. And she's an L counter, and I've already got two L counters. So, you know, despite having a, a card like Moon, which is probably on level with the average power level of this deck you know it, it doesn't really fit that well next i've got vile blood so vile blood is the best card in this deck right now um the reason for that is because as you noticed i don't have a lot of cards um vile blood costs a lot right it's an expensive card so he right if i want to use all three charges it's going to be 300 power right so I don't usually have the need to use more than three vile bloods at a time, right? Um, sometimes you do, right? It would be good to have six, but but I mean, even think I think when I played back in the day, I didn't even bother getting more than six charges on my vile blood because I just didn't find the need. But anyway, the vile blood is very good because it's siege, and it's hard to deal with, especially with the standard cards, right? So um, the the biggest weakness of most decks in uh, beginning play is that they don't have a lot of their counters. So for example, Fire Sworn is a very good counter against Vile Blood. You can see in my deck, I don't have a Fire Sworn, so I'd be in trouble. Um, same, same goes for a lot of things, right? Like I would usually, I would often use a Mortar against a Vile Blood. Um, Shadow or Pure Shadow uses like a Nether Warp to try and save it. Um, maybe a Night Guard, right? So these are cards that people may or may not have at this point. Um, and just because of that, it makes large, powerful units like the Vile Blood very, very good. Vile Blood's also nice because, as you see, only one upgrade actually does anything, right? This Infused Liquids is pointless, you, you don't care. So just the one upgrade does something. So it's like having a power level of an upgraded three with only having to upgrade one, right? So that's, those are several reasons why it's very good. I also don't have Burrower, so using a combination of Vile Blood and Fire Stalker, I can get my Siege damage pretty good. All right. Um, Root Nexus is not useful in this deck. Healing Wall as a building. Breeding Grounds um, is too slow, good for PvE. It's too slow. Same for buildings. Buildings just in general in PvP are bad. Um, there's only a few exceptions to that. Curse of Wink, um, very good card. Oh, I did upgrade Curse of Wink to U3. Um, I think the reason I did this was because I was playing some PvE because I wasn't able to get any PvP in. Um, and I had the, the gold, so I did it. Um, yeah, Creeping Paralysis, I can't use in this deck. Ray of Light is good healing, but too slow for PvP, right? Because in PvE, it just heals all of your units. You have mass units, it's fine. Um, in PvP, People just focus your units, and so since this is such a slowly healing spell, it's just not very good. And now we'll get to tier 3. So you notice in my tier 3, I've got 3 slots open, and I decided to go Frost for tier 3. So this much tier 3 is not very 
common, especially in a fire nature deck. Oh yeah, I have a harvester, but I have no other cards to use it. So um, if I can figure out how to get a shadow mage, then I might try to play some, some pure shadow. But anyway, so my tier three, let's look at just my tier three cards and see what options I've got available and why I chose what I chose. So um, these cards are just not good. Silver one lancer. So one of the things that's good to have in tier three is somebody that can run to a bunch of different places. So you can spawn them cheaply, you can run them around. And for example, I could come here. Now I'm at two different bases. He's got to pick which one to defend. Let's say he spawns a whole bunch of units right here, and then bam, I drop my Mo and go kill his base, right? So that's the general strategy of why you want to have small, fast units. Um, I also picked Frost because it gives me shield building, which is a super good defensive spell, and you want, um, I guess, so, so one of the things that I should emphasize uh, maybe other people don't have this experience, but I have a lot of difficulty actually closing out games. So what happens is we reach a very high power level and everybody's out of charges because we can't finish anybody off. We don't have any, enough charges. We don't have enough upgrades. Defensive um, defenses are good enough to survive in, in tier three, right? Because people don't have crazy amounts of charges. So we're both just sitting here with like a thousand power and no real way to to attack anything right like what happens is i got one charge of each i spend one charge of all my cards rush him they die he spends one charge of each of his cards rushes me he dies and we go like that until eventually we're spamming like tons of tier one units and stuff but we don't really have charges anywhere right so therein lies the problem and then you might get into a game where you're just trying to win on time with the highest score so that's something that i want to avoid so that's why i've got shield building to help me survive into a later tier three stage right because I, I do want to survive this if, if i get there right um and then i've also got mo um and so kind of the the idea is that if we scale into a late tier three despite fire nature being usually terrible at a late tier three with the with um everybody else having low charges and not very good stuff i can take a five card tier three and hold my own right especially because mo. mo is super expensive um but he offers me the ability to very quickly rush things down. He allows me to conquer defenses. Um, in the case that I get to a late tier three, right? Um, other cards I've got, Swamp Drake is an XL counter. Um, it also has a good CC because it makes things sleep. Um, it's also flying, which is very difficult to deal with for a lot of people. And I've got, did I skip it? I've got Magma Hurler. Uh, Magma Hurler is an L counter. Uh, it's ranged, so I can't deal with CC. These cards are both weak, um, definitely below the, these are some of the weakest tier three cards that you'll see played in PVP. And most of the reason you'll see them played is because they're starter and I play them. So yeah, but, but if you look at the cards I have in my deck, I don't really have better options, right? Like I can play Magma Hurler. I mean, we can look at all my tier three cards, right? I can play Shadow Insect. Um, I could play Corsair if I went here. Um, Lost Horror is not possible for me to play based on my first two cards. Northern Drake is not possible. Um, Sandstorm could be possible. So I could think about going Shadow, right? And then I've got Sandstorm and Corsair. But then that really slides me heavy on a late tier three, right? Because I'll have Sandstorm, Corsair, and Mo that all cost more than 200. So that to me would be a little bit too much. Um, so yeah, I mean, I probably wouldn't need the Corsair. And so yeah, I, I guess what I'm saying is I would rather have a shield building than a Sandstorm. So um, take from that what you will. But yeah, so, so I don't have a lot of tier three options. That's part of the reason why I play these two cards. Um, Virtuoso might be a better option. Giant Slayer should be a better option, but you know, those are expensive cards and I don't have them. So hopefully you guys found this helpful for me to go through my thought process of what I used to put the cards in my deck, the cards that I prioritized trying to get a hold of, um, 
and the cards that I prioritized upgrading. So the biggest thing that I want in my deck is a Burrower probably, but I mean I'm sure Burrowers are overpriced because everybody wants them, they're a super good card, and so I feel that for me like a cost benefit it's better to buy um, Fire Stalkers and Vile Blood and spend my Battle Force points maybe on a Gladiatrix or more charges for a Skyfire Drake, things like that. I mean Skyfire Drake is probably also pretty expensive. But yeah, hopefully you guys like that. Um, in my next video, which I'm going to record actually immediately after this, what I'm going to do is go through a 2v2 and sort of go through my thought process of using this deck for what I'm doing. So, see you guys in the next video.